Hello everyone, my name is Felicia Mosley and I am a student in Dr. Watson's Abnormal Psychology class. The article that I chose to review is Trauma Exposure, Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder Symptomatology and Aggression in Male Juvenile Offenders. That was a tongue twister. The reason that I chose this article was due to the assignment that we had last week on Chiraki Killinoids. The article was disturbing me. I just couldn't wrap my brain around the fact that they were just so violent and disrespectful. They were reckless and the main topic of discussion was who they were going to kill next. After watching that video, I wanted to find out what the common links was between the gang members and their destructive um, aggressive and aggressive behavior. Did you know that last year in Atlanta there was a study conducted um, it came from a hospital that had victims that suffer severe um, emotional stress due to the violence in their communities and it was comparable with victims of the Iraqi uh, Afghanistan and Vietnam the and the Vietnam War these uh, signs that they um, displayed were flashbacks, uh, progressive uh, feelings of fear and being ashamed, alienation, and aggressive behaviors. In another study that was conducted in Chicago, they had similar um, conclusions due to the fact of all of the violence and the shootings in the community. Um, there was high levels of PTSD found with the patients. Um, four out of ten experienced some form of high traumatic stress and um, even higher rates in those victims wounded by gunfire. Juvenile offenders had a have a high prevalence of trauma exposure and traumatic stress disorder as well as aggressive behavior. In a study conducted in the article there were 264 detained youth. 48% of them experienced traumatic loss. 38% of them experienced accidents, um, illness, or dis um, it was disastrous uh, trauma. 30% of them experienced some form of victimization, whether it be physical assault or uh, sexual abuse. The family abuse and um, community violence were high as well. Um, with all of the shootings, rapes, and murders in their community, that would be a cause for some type of stress. The level of exposure represents a serious medical health concern. Um, it also states that um, in uh, the last year, there were over 2.18 million youth who were arrested. Um, and many of the youth that were detained were victims of post-traumatic stress disorder. Male uh, juvenile offenders who have multiple types of traumatic exposure, including violence, had a higher rate of post-traumatic stress disorder, but not self-reported aggression. In addition, they fit the DSM-4 uh, diagnoses associated with severe emotional and behavioral problems because of their exposure to the community violence that they see on a day-to-day -day basis. Trauma exposure often includes multiple stressors that are experienced repeatedly over and over. Outcomes that the trauma exposure has included a diverse set of psychosocial problems including um, disassociative patterns and depression, aggressive behavior and juvenile delinquency as well. In addition, youth who experience trauma and violence or both um, were more likely to engage in delinquent behavior, sometimes even serious delinquent behaviors such as um, killings and death. Um, the link between the violence exposure and juvenile offending is particularly troubling in the light that juvenile offenders who are victims of violence often demonstrate offending behavior in their adulthood. Now this is troubling because if they don't get the help that they need the cycle will continue and they will just
continue that the violent behavior. They need help. The youth with the history of um, male treatment and uh, have a significantly higher rate of aggression and post-traumatic stress victims who were not victims of being maltreated. Um, there was also a question that they asked um, some of the, the members that I thought was interesting of the um, study. They asked, will juvenile offenders who endorse multiple types of potentially uh, traumatic event exposure endorse greater levels of post-traumatic symptoms and aggression compared to juvenile offenders who endorse a single type of event exposure. Another question that I thought was interesting that they are going to um, answer later on is among the juvenile offenders who endorse multiple types of potentially traumatic events, does PTSD symptoms severity account for the relationship between violent exposure and aggression? Now that's what I was wanting, that's what I wanted to know. Um, in the findings, they were conclusive. The results suggest that prevalent exposure to traumatic events and severe PTSD symptoms in juvenile uh, justice populations, particularly traumatic exposure to multiple types of events and violence, were associated with elevated levels of PTSD symptoms and also in reactive aggression. The goal of the study was to understand how self-reported exposure to potentially traumatic events like PTSD symptoms and aggression were related in male juvenile offenders opposed to violence in their communities in which they lived and their negative behavior. The article was able to determine that um, traumatic events are reported far more often in the urban communities because of what they see on a day-to-day -day basis and that's what leads to the violence and finally it suggests that um, that if they are diagnosed with PTSD what is the next step what do we do next they want to make sure that they are able to screen for the trauma exposed juveniles, individuals, and to help them get past that trauma so that they won't carry that behavior into their adulthood. I thought that this was a wonderful article. I thought that the, it was insightful and I appreciate your time and I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you so much.